Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the great pretender, probably one of the greatest pretenders of all time. That is Muhammad, the so-called prophet of Islam. I'm going to say that there's three things that constitute somebody to be a prophet. Number one, he should be able to do prophecies. God should be able to reveal him mysteries of the future to sanctify his message. Number two, he should have... He should be able to do miracles if he can't do prophecies. If he's going to warn people about God, shouldn't he at least be able to do miracles to sanctify who he is? Shouldn't God allow, uh, give him the ability to do that or through him do that? Or number three, at least if he can't do prophecies or he can't do miracles, shouldn't he at least have a higher moral message or moral teaching for the people to follow to make him a prophecy? Uh, a prophet sorry so by going through these let's see what the Quran has to say about this in chapter 13 verse 7 the unbelievers say why is a sign a yatan not been sent down upon him from his Lord the answer is thou art only a warner and a guide to every people that's Quran 13 and verse 7 Quran 7 verse 188 this is about the future say i do not control any benefit or harm for my own soul except as allah pleases and had i known the unseen i would have made much of good and no evil would have touched me i am nothing but a warner and the giver of good news to people who believe so number one he's saying you know what if i knew the future i would only use it to benefit myself first of all but i don't Quran chapter 6 and verse 50 say I tell you that with me are the tr are the treasures of Allah oh I tell you not that with me are the treasures of Allah nor do I know what is hidden nor do I tell you what you I am an angel but I follow what is revealed to me say can the blind be held equal to the seeing will you then consider not Sahih Muslim Abu Huraya so here's uh oh sorry Actually, before I go there, I want to show you from Tafsir and Ibn Kathir why Allah refrained from doing miracles in Muhammad. It is probably one of the stupidest stories you will ever read and the biggest excuses you could find. Sayyid bin Jubair said, The idolaters said, O Muhammad, you claim that before you there were prophets, among whom was one to whom the wind was sub subjugated. The other, who could bring the dead back to life. In you want, if you want us to believe in you, 
Ask your Lord to turn us Safa into gold for us. Allah conveyed to him by inspiration, Huaya, I have heard what they have said. If you wish, I will do what they say. But if they do not believe after that, the punishment will come down upon them because after the sign has been sent, there is no room for speculation. Or if you wish, I will be patient with your people and give them more time, he said. So uh, somehow Muhammad's manipulating Allah's will. But anyways, O oh Lord, give them more time. <laughs> Funny how he chooses that one. This was also narrated by Kudish, Ibn Juhal, and others. Amen Ahmad record that Ibn Abbas, Abbas said, The people of Mecca asked the Prophet to turn Asaf into gold for them and to remove the mountains from around Mecca so they could cultivate the land. It was said to them by Allah, If you wish, I will be patient and give them more time, or if you wish, I will do what they are asking. But if they then disbelieve, they will be destroyed, as the nations before them were destroyed, he said. No, be patient and give them more time, then Allah re revealed. And nothing stops us from sending the ayat, but that the people of old denied them. And Nasi also reported this from the Hadith of Jer, Amin Ahmad, recorded that Ibn Abbas, Abbas said that Korish said to the Prophet, Ask your Lord to turn Asaf into gold, and we will believe in you, he said. Will you really do that? They said, Yes. So he turned his Lord turn so he asked his Lord, and Jabriel came to him and said, Your Lord conveys his salam to you and says, if you wish, I will turn Asaf into gold for them. Then who, whoever of them disbelieves after that will be punished with a torment, the like of which has never been seen in creation. Or if you wish, I will open the gates of repentance and mercy on them, he said. Rather, the gates of repentance and mercy. And we sent down not the signs except to make them afraid of destruction, Kodesh said. Allah makes people afraid with whatever signs he wills so that they may learn a lesson and remember and return to him. We were told that Al-Kuhath Kuf, was shaken at the time of Ibn Masud, who said, O people, your Lord is rebuking you, so pay heed. Similarly, it was reported that al binan struck, was struck by several earthquakes at the same time of Umar bin al kahidyab Umar said, You have changed my, by Allah. And if such a quake were to strike again, I will subject you to such and such, the Prophet said, in a hadith whose authenticity is agreed upon. The sun and the moon the sun and the moon are two of the signs of Allah, and they are not eclipsed from the death or life of anyone. Allah uses them to make his servants afraid. So, if you see them, hasten to remember him, call on him, and seek his forgiveness. Then he said, oh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, first of all, it's saying that the eclipse is a sign. Well, this is very false, because in the Quran, it says that they each follow their own path, and they cannot overtake one another when talking about the sun and the moon. So, that's false, because there's an eclipse. Number two, if you see he goes up and he says, well, you'll die, you'll die if, if we give you these signs because he couldn't do them. Number three, he said that they gave signs, but people before you didn't believe him. What a big fat lie this was. The Jews believe in all the signs of uh, Moses that he did and escaped out of Egypt. And the Christians still today believe all the miracles that Christ did and all the miracles that the prophet did, prophets did. So this is false in itself. Um, and I'm out of time, so stay tuned for part two.